Good morning and welcome to this service on the 13th of September 2020. My name is Pastor Steve Mayer and I'm the Methodist Minister at Belfair's Lee Wesley and Highlands Methodist Church. I've only taken over at Highlands since the 1st of September, so welcome to any of the members or attenders from that church that may be listening from now on. We're going to start with a call to worship, a presentation from Psalm 103, verse 8. Our opening hymn for this service is All Creatures of Our God and King, written by St Francis of Assisi. Enjoy.
let us share now in this responsive prayer. Eternal God, it was your spirit hovering over the waters at the dawning of that first day. It was your voice echoing through the darkness that brought forth light. God of all ages, accept our sacrifice of praise. Eternal God, it was your love that birthed humankind and placed them in a garden. It was your hand that helped them to their feet each time they fell. God of all ages, accept our sacrifice of praise. Eternal God, it was your prophets who spoke forth your word to a rebellious generation. It was your son who showed the depth of love that would not let us go. God of all ages, accept our sacrifice of praise. God of life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, we praise your holy name. God of joy, whose sunrise wakes us and sunset amazes us, we praise your holy name. God of hope, whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, we praise your holy name. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, we praise your holy name. God of peace, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us, we praise your holy name. God of eternity, who has always loved us and by grace has saved us, we praise your holy name. God of all ages, who from generation to generation has heard the cries of your children humbly seeking forgiveness, and has welcomed sinners back into your embrace. Hear the thoughts of our hearts, examine our motives, forgive us our faults of word and action. We ask this through your Son, who died that we might know the true cost of forgiveness. Amen. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today's service is brought to us by Anthea Meek. She is a member of Belfair's Methodist Church. Thank you, Anthea. The Gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. The parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him, 
Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sure we all understand the general concept of forgiveness. You know, to pardon, to overlook, to be merciful, to be compassionate. But most of us, including me, probably aren't very good on the specifics of how we actually do it. So this morning, we're going to look at some answers to these questions. How do I forgive him? How do I forgive her? And as I read those questions, you probably thought straight away of that him or that her in your life. How do I forgive him? How do I forgive her? Well, firstly, we have to admit that we have been seriously hurt. This may seem very simple, but that is the starting point in our search for forgiveness. We have to admit that we have really been hurt. We like to pretend that he or she said or did. Um, we like to pretend that it didn't bother us or faze us in any way, because admitting that we have been hurt highlights our vulnerabilities or weaknesses. But until we are willing to admit that we were hurt by them, we are not going to be in a place where we can begin to think about forgiveness. Now, there are many instances in life where there is no need for forgiveness. Things like minor disappointments or an unintentional comment from someone. But situations that do require forgiveness are ones where the pain inflicted is personal, unfair and deep. At this point, as we hurt, we are likely to find some hatred in our hearts. Hatred, of course, is never a good thing, but we must be careful that we don't try to get rid of it by covering it up. When we find hate in our hearts, it's simply a sign we are going to need to forgive. Secondly, we have to release any thoughts of revenge. A mother ran into a bedroom when she heard her seven-year-old son scream. She found his two-year-old sister pulling his hair. She gently released the little girl's grip and said comfortably to, comfortingly to the boy, there, there. She didn't mean it. She doesn't know that that hurts. He nodded his acknowledgement and she left the room. As she started down the hall, the little girl screamed. Rushing back in, she asked, what happened? The little boy replied, she knows now. Few people in our society today would dispute our right to get even. The rule of the world is, is to do unto others as they have done unto you. When we choose to forgive though, we choose to put aside our right for revenge. And at that moment we make that decision, we are doing two things. Firstly, we are leaving ultimate judgment and justice and vengeance to God. And secondly, we are deliberately choosing for ourselves the path of forgiveness. Acknowledging that we have been hurt gets us in the right place to begin with. But surrendering our right to get even is the first step down that forgiveness pathway. Now, some would argue that choosing such a path is going to make us a wussy or a wimp because we're given up all our power and we're going to end up as doormats. 
But I believe through this choice, there is a power that is unleashed in this decision that cannot come from any other source. So what does this power look like? Listen to this. Albert Toomey is a judge of the New York State Supreme Court. A young defendant was convicted in Judge Toomey's court of gunning down another person execution style. The murderer had a bad record, was no stranger to the system and only stared in anger at the jury as it returned its guilty verdict. The victim's family had attended every day of the two week trial. On the day of the sentencing, the victim's mother and grandmother addressed the court. When they spoke, neither addressed the jury, both spoke directly to the murderer. They both forgave him. You broke the golden rule, loving God with all your heart, soul and mind, and you broke the law. Love your neighbour as yourself. I am your neighbour. The older of the two women told him. So you have my address. If you want to write, I will write back to you. I sat in this trial for two weeks and for the last 16 months I have tried to hate you. But you know what? I could not hate you. I feel sorry for you because you made a wrong choice. Judge Toomey writes, for the first time since the trial began, the defendant's eyes lost their laser force and appeared to surrender to a life force that only a mother can generate, nurturing, unconditional love. After the grandmother finished, I looked at the defendant. His head was hanging low. There was no more swagger, no more stare. The destructive and evil forces within him collapsed helplessly before this remarkable display of humaneness. In choosing the path of forgiveness, that grandmother unleashed a power that could not be tapped into any other way. And that power was what caused that defendant to hang his head for the first time. Thirdly then, we have to search for the real person behind the evil mask. When we have been wronged, we like to pigeonhole our wrongdoer. We emphasize all the bad things about them. We twist anything that looks remotely good, and we are very quick to put down their every motive. We see them only and always in one way. The process of forgiveness requires that we begin to look for the real person behind the person we've created in our minds. We have to begin to see that they have not only hurt, but they may be hurting too. As the saying goes, hurt people hurt. We begin to see that they are weak and fallible too. Then we begin to find reasons in our hearts to turn towards mercy instead of malice. Now this doesn't mean we grant them victim status and excuse all their wrongs. We're forgiving, not excusing. But it does mean that we begin to try to treat them as a fellow traveller in this messy thing we call life. And what's our motivation for doing all this? What's our motivation for this forgiveness? Well, it's God's word. The parable that we read tells us that what we are doing for them, God has already done for us. God could have seen our sin and said, I've seen enough. That's all I need to know about them. He could have pigeonholed humanity, but he looked beyond our sin and saw something worth living, loving and something worth saving. And that's what we've been called to do, too, with our fellow travellers in life. So in conclusion, let's quickly recap on how we forgive others. Firstly, we have to admit that we have been hurt. We have to release any thoughts of revenge and we have to search for the real person beneath the evil mask. Pretty tough points, but necessary for forgiveness. So how do we fit into this message today? How do you fit into this message today? Are there those that you need to forgive? Do you need to set yourself on that right path, that path of forgiveness? I'll leave you with a reading from Ephesians 4 verse 32, which sums up this complete message. And it says, be kind 
and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us today. Quite often we can find your word extremely challenging as you uh, correct our behaviours, as you look at how we treat each other in our day-to-day -day lives. So Father God, I pray for all of us, myself included, that if there are those who have offended us in any way, have hurt us or our families, or have made life difficult for us, people who we may harbour some sort of malice or hatred towards, Lord, help us to take those first steps on that pathway of forgiveness. Empower us, I pray, to take those steps in your name. Amen. Before we come to our prayers of intercession, we're going to sing our next hymn, which is entitled Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, written by David Evans. <laughs> come to our prayers of intercession or our prayers for others and when I say the words Lord in your mercy if you wish to then please respond with hear our prayer shall we pray dear father God you call us to speak to you in prayer even when the places we would usually go are not available help us to know your spirit's presence wherever we pray Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we especially pray for those who are living in fear. Give them your strength. For those who have not yet realised the urgency of this pandemic situation, protect them and all of us from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we deal with the practicalities of protecting people from coronavirus, we continue to remember our calling to care for others whilst always being mindful 
but our call is always to respond to the good news in Jesus. We are a people of hope. We need to declare the model and model good news in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn for this service is probably one of my all time favourite hymns. It's very lively and again talks about forgiveness. Uh, written by Dave Bilborough and it's entitled How Wonderful, How Glorious is the Love of God. much for joining me for this service today and I hope you found this useful. A special thanks to Anthony Meek for the scripture reading we had today. And now a final benediction. Gracious and forgiving God, we confess that we often take forgiveness from you too lightly, even for the worst of our sins. We often find forgiving others difficult and because of this, Help us recognise that the Holy Spirit empowers us to offer forgiveness, even in the midst of our pain. Today and always we make this prayer. Amen. May God bless each one of you. <laughs>